Welcome to Allergy Season, a Let's Play series where Joey and I play through some really hard games. On level two, we fight Gascon, but first, we talk about pizza for a long while, a really long while, and we find out things about each other we didn't know. Hi! No, no, no. No, 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 no. Go. No, 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 no. Wave. It's all wave. Anyway, I want to read that the item description for that badge you just picked up. Yes. Uh, it is... The Sword Hunter Badge. <clears throat> sword Hunter Badge. One of the badges crafted by the Healing Church. The Silver Sword is a symbol of a church hunter. Ludwig was the first of many Healing Church hunters to come, many of whom were clerics, as it was clerics transformed into the most hideous beasts. Oh, okay, so he was a cleric. Of the Healing Church. Of the Healing Church, and he's been turned into that beast. So the thing that they were burning manning was also a beast, so we just fought a beast. Yes. I say we. You did it. Okay. You help. Yeah. Your banter and was actually really, really helpful. Your your talking was actually really helpful. You keep talking. I'm gonna order some food. Yeah. What are you gonna get? I'm gonna get some pizza. Ooh, some pizza. Nice. Maybe some pizza. Me likey breadsticks. Me likey breadsticks. I'm glad that you picked up from what I was doing. <laughs> no, no. We're past all that now. Hey, hi. Who's Lex that? Lexi Fatal. <gasps> Lexi. How you doing, Lexi? I haven't seen you paint in a while. Actually, I saw you paint the other night. Wait, that's the thing you say to people? I haven't seen you paint in a while, stranger. Well, howdy, pilgrim. Well, howdy, I haven't seen yeah, you paint around these parts lately. <laughs> Where do I go? Ooh, this pizza's called a hot picante. Hot Spicy, picante? A tangy pizza with... Oh, it's got green peppers on it, though. Green pepper is the worst. It, 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 it I, You mean like eggs. chili or like bell pepper? Like a, no, like a green bell pepper. Like, it's the most I like green bell pepper, pepper better so than red. Bitter. Oh, no, red pepper's delicious. It's like, it's, it's got like... No, a, I like it better than red. That's what I'm saying. It's, red pepper's delicious. Green pepper sucks. No, green pepper is... No, green pepper than... is bitter. Green pepper is sucks. Died. I did, Joey. Thank you. You don't have to say it. The game says it for you. That's four. What's wrong with green peppers? They're, I'll tell you what's wrong with green peppers. They're sweet. They're sweeter. They are not sweet. They are bitter, and they t everything. Anytime. Okay, here are the vegetables I, <laughs> I can't eat. <deal> <laughs> Welcome yeah. to nearly competent vegetable if, making. If green peppers are in a thing, it's all I can taste. If celery is in a thing, it's all I can taste, and it's a horrible taste. Um, I, yeah, Celery's those are delicious. two that I. Oh, I hate celery. It's it's awful. But green pepper, especially on a pizza, it's just all I can taste is green pepper. And I don't like the taste of green pepper at the best of times. But like a deluxe pizza? I wouldn't get a deluxe pizza. Because, I, I because usually get a meat pizza. Here's the here's the like pizza tier list, okay? So S tier, you got your, your meats, you know, your pepperoni, your ham. Um, uh, you know, maybe like a, a salami of some kind. Then you got your A tier, so you've got like... Well, S is first, then A. So then you've got like... Um, Mushrooms. Mushrooms is an A tier topping on a pizza. Okay. Uh, anchovies is an A tier topping on a pizza. Um, artichoke hearts, even. That's a pretty good topping. But maybe it's going to be lower A tier, but still A tier. Your B tier stuff, it's like, okay, I can take it. It's fine, but I probably wouldn't go out of my way for it. And that would be like, um, I don't like. Uh, ground beef is fine, but I, you know, I don't want a taco pizza. I, I know that's a thing. I had a pierogi pizza once, that was pretty good. Um, Olives, I don't like black olives. So like the olives you put on a pizza, there again, I find them too bitter and overpowering. But I love like a green olive. Like also, there need a, an olive. I'll eat an olive all day. But the black peppers are a little bit too bitter. Um, but mushrooms, olives, peppers, artichoke, squash, eggplant, squash and eggplant, huh? On a pizza? That's interesting. Eggplant. What? I could see eggplant being good. On a pizza? Eggplant's very savory. Squash, well, I guess. Squash. That one though, that's interesting to me. I'm not sure. I don't know how I'd feel about that. Yeah, that's interesting. But, uh, but, you know, that, I'll leave that like, involves... like an onion on a pizza, that's fine. Tomato on a pizza is pretty good. Tomato, but it has to be cooked tomato, in my opinion. It depends on the type of pizza. Like, if you're having a doner pizza, I want, like, fresh raw tomato. You know as I mean? long as it's not canned. No. What I find is a lot of... should cut up a tomato. Is what, yeah. 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 What I find is a lot of people will do canned tomatoes. No, I don't... Yeah. And that's the crap that I'm like... I don't... I mean, like... I, I, don't, I don't need a ton of vegetables. I'm kind of, you know, an unhealthy 
um, middle-aged fat white man, but uh, I, I would prefer a fresh vegetable over a canned vegetable almost every day of the week. Those are the veggies you dislike. Oh, you hate? Boy, the font really is small for me on the screen. That's the second time. What am I fitting on pickles? On a I think pizza? You can make it bigger. We discussed this earlier. Pe pickle on a pizza? I'm not here for that shit. Maybe it's delicious, but I just I can't wrap my head around it. Fuck! It's okay, buddy. It's all right, man. Just shake it off. Um, Do sorry. not Taylor Swift me. <laughs> oh, I hate that. That's not what I was. Fuck off. She didn't invent shake it off. No, okay? but she she made it don't, better. Don't start with me. This we will come to blows over Taylor Swift. <laughs> this but, is up yeah. there with when I burped in your face. So yeah, so you dislike. <laughs> I will leave. So I find it interesting to. So are you saying you hate these in general or on a pizza? Okay. Blitz girl, that's what I'm. Can I make this bigger? Can you? I would love that. Mm. Well, can't you just zoom in on this part of the screen? Yeah, there you go. Because oh, I don't need to see our thumbnail. Yeah, there we go. That's oh, in general. Okay, see, because I love me a mushroom. I I'll eat a mushroom. Honestly, you don't like mushrooms? Oh no! I'm, oh no! You're staring I'm, yourself. I'm staring myself good. for the game. No, I, I love a mushroom. I love a good Canadian pizza. Oh yeah, love it. You, get, you know what? They put anchovies on that son of a bitch. That's what? a what? Yes, Canadian pizza with anchovies. Oh, I thought you were saying things. now they started to. No, I'm saying... And I'm like, what? I'm saying no, I usually add it. that. You add anchovy? Oh, I love anchovy. I don't think I've ever actually had an anchovy. See, that's the thing. It's like this... This, like, new people like, oh, anchovies, gross. Like, anchovies are, like, the best. And here's the other thing. You ever want to make yourself, like, a Caesar salad? You get a little anchovy. Or you want to, like, make you frying something up? You don't put butter in that pan. You put a little smidgen of anchovy paste in that pan. Let me tell you, we've gotten closer. Remember when we I know, were yeah. it's and you were like, like this. Oh, I'll sit over here, and I was like, okay. Now we're like close together. So I'm still going through the the, the bottom tier of this. So olives. So you don't like olives? Yeah, black olives, no thank you. But a green olive, or like a calm, like an olive and all, some kind of olive in like an oil, delicious. Artichoke, I like artichoke hearts a lot. Squash, I'll eat a squash. But depend, I don't like my, my wife makes spaghetti squash a lot, and I don't love the spaghetti squash, but she does. Um, eggplant again, eggplant parmesan. That's a that's a that's a good uh, that's a spicy meatball. Uh, but you love broccoli now. Yeah, you know broccoli is okay if it's cooked. Spinach, I'm not big on spinach. I'll eat spinach like in a salad. Brussels sprouts, I loathe Brussels sprouts. They are one of the few foods like I I know I said I hated celery and green pepper. The hatred I have for celery and green pepper is but a grain of, a single grain of sand on the beach that is my loathing of Brussels sprouts. That was very poor. <laughs> what are your thoughts on turnips? I love a turnip. I'll eat a turnip. Turnips are good. My dad loves turnips. Yeah, they're good. Everyone else in my family hates them. Oh, okay. Every holiday meal where it's like a big like Christmas, Thanksgiving kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, my mom will always make my dad a just a small bowl of like mashed turnips. That's nice. Your mom sounds like a nice lady. Until we met Mallory. Oh, and now she don't. Now she makes a bigger serve. Oh, because she also likes it. Mallory loves yeah, they're good. turnips. I like that kind of thing. Um, Brussels sprouts, could go and drink, and I wouldn't. Yeah, it would be great. I would love that. So, like, as I said, green pepper and celery, I don't like them, but, like, I could eat them and not gag. There are three foods that would make me gag to have to eat beets, Brussels sprouts, and the one time I ever tried head cheese, which is disgusting. Oh, also, one time my dad made me try Clamato juice, and I threw up. I hate Caesars. I don't drink any alcohol because I keep my temple clean, as you know. Fuck. But uh, I uh, <laughs> the second I said I don't like Caesars, I was like, and here we go. <laughs> I don't. You know what? I think in this particular situation, you're the album. But I think, like in general, I think most people would agree with you. People, everyone I know is all about the Brussels sprouts. Um, veggie pizzas with pineapple and pepperoni. I am very hit and miss on the pineapple on pizza. Like, I love pineapple. Pineapple pepperoni I is love the pineapple. greatest thing in the world. I've, I've had some pineapple pizzas that I'm like, this is outstanding. And I've had some where I'm like, this is a filler. This is shit. I had, there was a pizza called a, um, a Gordy oh, Howe, I think it was, it was called. called. A, a and it was this, it, it was like a, it was a Hawaiian pizza, but it had like honey on it and shit. Oh, outstanding. Oh! You can like stab yourself with your epi pen. Um, Caesar salad dressing Allergy is made from anchovies. Right, I guess that's correct, yeah. That's what I probably do. But I think that modern Caesar salad dressing, they probably, I don't know if they use it in, like, the store box uh, shit, right? Anyway, I bet so if you look into it, they will, but they don't advertise it. Because there's yeah, a maybe. stigma. Because uh, of the so stigma. Ah, I've done that dead! Clamato plus beer equals love. You know, I had a friend who used to pour uh, classic Clamato juice into her beer, and I was like, you're just combining two things that are revolting. 
<laughs> it's two bad tastes that taste bad together. Two bad tastes. Yeah. The taste bad. Oh, it's kind of like you take the classic you got peanut butter in my chocolate commercial, but it's like, oh, you got bile in my diarrhea. Oh. You got diarrhea in my bile. Don't do a voice. Because this bitch. This bitch is notorious. Open the door then. She sounds like um, Eliza Doolittle from My Fair Lady. <laughs> she does. Yeah, I, I just, I can't. I can't see taking two things that I very much dislike the taste of and combining them to suddenly taste, make them taste good. Like. Mm. But I also know that I'll never find out because I don't like the taste of beer and Clamato that one time made me throw up. So. Yeah, I mean. That's... I also am just curious how they came up with Clamato juice. It's such a bizarre, like, oh, it's tomato juice. Stuff. With clam juice in it. Oh, it is. Yeah. There is clam juice. That's why it's called Clamato. Yeah, I know. It's I always just like, oh, let's see, I got this clam juice and I, I always got this forget tomato. That. And... Are you thinking what okay. I'm thinking? No, obviously not. That's a weird thing to think. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Uh, that we throw both these away? Yes. Okay, back to me figuring out what pizza to order. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pepperoni pineapple. No, no, no. Well, this one's called all meat. Okay. Italian pepperoni, ground beef, bacon, salami. Are you ready for this? Pan. Yeah. This exactly. is an absolute legend. Oh, look at this guy. He's got, a, he's got a plague mask on. Nene. His name is Nene? Do we watch him whip oh, first? Uh, yeah. And an outsider. Now watch me whip. My name is Nene. Now watch me, Nene. What a Eileen. mess you've been... Eileen. Come on, Eileen. Oh, no. Tonight of all nights. Here. Here to welcome, to welcome the new hunter. new hunter. She gonna give us something? Oh, a bold hunter's mark. Yep. Bold. We'll read it after. Prepare yourself for the worst. So Eileen. Is a hunter of hunters. Ooh. It's like a man's man. <laughs> yeah. So she hunts hunters. She does. Bold hunter's mark. Dangling upside down rune etched in the mind of a hunter. The image upon this parchment allows one to envision the rune with clarity. Allows a hunter to awaken again without losing blood echoes. A trick that seems nearly too good to be true. Also, it's like a continuum of sorts. Gotta go into lurk mode to study. Yep. Right on. Right on. What are you talking about? Lurk mode into a study? Meaning that they're gonna, she's going to study mm -hmm. while we're playing and not be on chat. Mm. Listening. But she's not speaking German. Like, it seems... I've never heard that phrase. Go into lurk mode. But like, I know what lurking is. is. Context clues, you can figure out what was intended by the... Alright. <laughs> what are you having for dinner there, Joey? I haven't decided yet. Exactly. So there's a buffalo chicken pizza. That could be good. Grandmother's pizza? Pepperoni, bacon, black olives. No, no, no. Not happening. Why don't you just get pepperoni pineapple? Why don't you just... Fuck! Stop dying, and maybe I will. I'm not dead. <laughs> But I am trapped down here. There's a lot of different pizzas in this place. I'm trapped down here with rats! So, it's what? Oh, wow. Those are the R-O-U-S's. Yep. Rats of unusual size. I don't think they exist. You're almost dead. You should do it every time. The allergies. The allergies are getting to me. Oh, I'll do a death counter, but I think... <laughs> I'll do a death count. I almost paused, but I realized it's not pausing. I'll do a death counter, but instead of, like, death, it'll be, uh... It'll be, like... Allergy attack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it'll be a picture of a okay. pen. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this Canadian pizza, but I'm going to get anchovies on it so you can finally see the light. Yep. I will... I'll try an anchovy. Yeah, it's delicious. And if I hate it, every time I die, I have to eat an anchovy. It's okay. Did I tell you my one buddy, Jamie, wants me to play Dark Souls? But every time I die, he's he has uh, the last dab from uh, Hot Ones. Oh, it's I. It's like over I've two million two. Okay, ball. That's not. That's not healthy. You shouldn't do that. And he says he's like, every time you die, you gotta take a bite of one of these chicken wings. That's not cool, man. That's that's just that would hurt. Don't hurt yourself. He's getting me into hot sauce. I mean, I love a hot sauce. But I mean, I like a hot sauce in that I want to eat it. I don't want to like. I don't. Want, I don't view hot sauce as like an endurance thing where it's like I have to show that I. My Fuck! Knife. I'm gonna die. No, you're not. You're not gonna die. You're gonna get away. You're gonna stack yourself with an epic fan. There you go. Here, now, shoot those lighters. The hairy lighters. 
Look at that. You're kicking ass and taking rat names. Well done. Taking rat names. Yeah, this was like a fucking James Herbert novel. Right? What um, what are classic like rat names? Like names uh, for rat. Ratigan from the Great. Radigan. Hello, Basil Baker Street. Who played him? Was that Vincent, Vincent Price? Price? Thank you. Oh, Radigan from Fun on Earth. Oh, Radigan from Fun on Earth. You're one of a kind. My kids are really into that movie right now. It was my favorite Disney movie growing up. We actually just watched it. It's so good. It is. Holds up. The world's greatest criminal rat. What did you call me? I like that uh, it's uh, Sherlock. But he's like a rat that lives in... Sh- or Sorry, a I'm mouse. Out. He lives in Sherlock Holmes' like, yeah, house at 221B Baker Street. But his name's Basil. Basil of Baker Street, yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's such a good oh, idea. Do you know why his name is Basil? One of the most famous actors to portray Sherlock Holmes was Basil Rathbone. Really? Yes, sir. What what version did he? Uh, it's movies and television, but like in Britain in like the fifties and maybe earlier than that, maybe in the forties and fifties. I'd have to double check, but they're very very good. My favorite Sherlock. I, I'm kind of a um, like I don't like Sherlock, the show Sherlock. I don't mm. really. Li- I think it's well acted and well written, but I don't particularly like modern reimaginings of Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to Sherlock Holmes. I like him to be in like Victorian England and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So my favorite, even though it's maybe not the truest to the books, is my favorite actor is Peter Cushing, and he plays him in the, in the a movie version of The Hound of the Baskervilles from Hammer, oh. Hammer horror film, and uh, it's fantastic. And Christopher Lee is also in it, but uh, it's really Christopher good. Lee. Yeah, he's in a lot of those movies with Peter Cushing. They were friends. Really? Yep. I didn't know that. Christopher Lee. I really liked Count Dooku. Yeah, I know. Oh, but for anyone else, count to. Just in t- I just think that that's funny for that to be my pull for Christopher Lee. Um, it's not actually. But. Saruman. Saruman. I really liked, and this is gonna cause a lot of hate. I actually really liked the Robert Downey Jr. You're right. That is gonna cause a lot of hate. I liked it because no, I remember in- Sherlock in the books and stuff having weird, like addictions. Oh no! Yeah, he was definitely like they don't make him quite as dark, but yeah, I, I just found um, I find Guy Ritchie's directing just to be unwatchable. Tarkin was played by Peter Cushing. Saruman was Christopher Lee. Tarkin? Grand Moff Tarkin is Peter Cushing. Yeah, that's Peter Cushing. That's Peter Cushing. That's where he yeah, did. He played Sherlock. He also was in like my favorite Frankenstein movie, the, horror, um, the Curse of Frankenstein, and the Revenge, and a bunch of other Frankenstein movies. He also played Van Helsing in several of the Dracula movies that Hammer did. He's in a lot of great films from that era. I absolutely... Oh, yeah, Saruman and Tarkin. I see what you were saying. You were saying, yeah, Saruman and Tarkin together. I'm like... I can't imagine I'm like Sar- misunderstanding and misreading everything but real sense to the point where they're just not going to be a fan of me. Who? Let's go. Girl. Yeah. So there, it seems like every time they say something, I like misinterpret it or <laughs> misread it. But yeah. Anyway. I even increased the font. I know. Saruman so and turns Tarkin? It wasn't the font. It was just that I'm fuck yeah. stupid. I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually having like a hard time imagining Saruman and Tarkin in a movie together. That'd be they're, insane. So they're in like probably a Dooku and Tarkin. Tarkin. They're in like over a dozen movies together. I guarantee it. But yeah, Peter Cushing is my favorite actor of all time. What's up, rats? There had to be a smarter way to get down there that didn't involve you getting hurt and then getting pwned by rats. You're like, you idiot. <gasps> like, look, I, you know, I'm, you know, look, I got. I love that, you. <laughs> that was just like an irresponsible way to do that. You barrel roll off a cliff and then miss. So it's the only whiff. way to get down to that area. Well, don't whiff then on the death six. Yeah, that's right, six. <laughs> Asthma attack. Yeah, they're not deaths. They're allergy attacks. Allergy attacks. Yeah. What are the other puffer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Every time you wake up in the read the oh. madman's knowledge. Let's read it. Oh, I got madman's knowledge. That is actually really important. Thank you, Blitz Girl. Bloodstone Chunk. That was actually my nickname in high school. <laughs> Dang! I should sue. Um, Do the Mad truffle Man's shuffle. Knowledge. There we go. Madman's knowledge. Skull of a madman touched by the wisdom of the great ones, used to gain insight. Making contact with eldritch wisdom is a blessing, for even if it drives one mad, it allows one to serve a grander purpose for posterity. Did you get an energy drink? No, I got some cokes though. Okay. The great ones. So are they is that meant to be um, reminiscent of the great old ones? Like we're talking about elder gods here, eldritch horrors, the great old ones. 
that is that is a fair Sothothery. That is a fair connection. This is why I want to oh, I'm so glad I'm playing this with you. Aww, you have sorry. a vast knowledge about things. So a lot of this stuff you'll be like, Oh, this is like this and I'll be like, Yeah, that's that on. Well, I, I do love me some Lovecraftian fiction. Um, that's good. Yeah, I've read uh, a lot of it. And I've a lot, read a lot of, of, of biographies old. and such works about Lovecraft, who is sort of the perfect example of, like, a fuck shit dude who really created some amazing things. It was interesting. Which you get to the DLC. Oh, yeah. What, DLC. Are we gonna get, like, is it like a Shadow over Innsmouth thing? Are we going to get to see fish monsters? Fish monster man? I want invisible gigantic monsters living in a barn. A la the Dunwich Horror. Have you ever read an H.P. Lovecraft story? I have them on the Kindle. I keep meaning to. I'm... <laughs> I would... You know what? I was going to read one, and you know what I got distracted with? The fact that the cat's name was extremely racist? No. Anyway. I'll tell you what Not at all. Um, no, what I got distracted with was um, a completely different... Uh, yeah, book series. Oh, yeah. Uh, I found out because when I was a tween, yeah, it's the best age group to describe it as. Okay. Uh, I was obsessed with the Redwall books. I loved the Redwall books. Right? Yeah. So but... I had Martin the Warrior. Yep, I love Martin the Warrior. There's a prequel. Yes. There's one before that. Yeah. There's a... Lord Brockwell or yeah. Brockwell or whatever. So I found so weird. I was just reading the Brian Jake's Wikipedia article like last week. So I just found that out. So on my Kindle, I bought oh, cool. the first one. I'm reading that because I was going to read the first. I, I googled like chronological like reading, Lovecraft. Yeah, the reading. Or, okay, yeah. So here's the thing: if you're going to read some Lovecraft, I will recommend eight stories to you. That I would say read these, and if you like them, then read. Do you have to ones. read them in a certain order? No, they are all. Here's the thing, none of the stories are connected, and the whole idea of the mythos and this grander connected universe Fuck. was not something Lovecraft ever came up with or intended. That was all, like, done posthumously by August Derleth. Oh, okay. So all the whole idea of this, like, interconnected cycle of stories, they're not, they're all separate. But, like, other people have since gone and kind of united them into this big cosmology, but he never intended it that way. So you can read any of them in any order you want, they're all completely unrelated. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just didn't know if it was, like... No, it's not a continuing story. There's no actual side note. Those guys are cool. Yeah, no one eyes. No, that's my that's my blood eyes. Fucking hell! <laughs> Stupid idiot. <laughs> right back into the rats. <laughs> Don't fucking do it! Don't do it! Don't do it, Goku! <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! Go, go! You pulled too many marks. Fuck it! <laughs> Hoon! Leave! <laughs> Bastard? <laughs> Holy shit, how did you survive that? What the fuck? Oh, fuck. Oh my god, that was something else. <laughs> oh god, guns! <laughs> uh, <laughs> <that's amazing. laughs> Get out of here. Jesus, fuck. <laughs> Die <Dying> count. <laughs> You survived it, though. I'm impressed. I know, but there's a joke in Prepare to Try where it's like, you just got done, man. Oh, okay. Wow, Fuck. that was something. Well, at least I can get my souls. I don't even remember my... what I was talking about. August Derleth and stories, I guess, but yeah. There are some... Like, there's the, his best stories. There's also some stuff that you have to be prepared for because it's like he was a horrible, virulent racist who had very idiotic ideas that even at the time weren't normal or okay. But it, I find his racism more pathetic than anything else when you actually, like, read about it. It's just kind of like, he was just like a sad, scared, weird little man. And the more I read about him, the more I learn about him, the more I'm like, you were like both a genius and a just a weird little peckerhead, You think man. the rats are down there, or did they fall down into that tunnel? I don't think they fell, man. I think they're but they're waiting for you. Why do you barrel roll, though? Like you, like a oh, that's all it was? Just two blo bloodstone shards? <laughs> oh, look at them. They're all, like, waiting there. There's someone right, right there. Oh, hello. Yeah. But yeah, you should read, like, Shadow Over Innsmouth or Rats in the Walls. <laughs> or, that one's um, like, Mother God, I want to kill him. 
All I will say, though, is that, like, you might want... My favorite one is the Color Out of Space. So read the Color Out of Space. But I will say that, like, just the first one you read should not be at the Mountains of Madness. It's probably his best. I think that actually might be the one I have. It's really, really good. It was one of the last ones he wrote. It's closer to novel length, but it's still, like, more... Well, like, know else, it's fantastic, but um, it has a bit more explanation as to the origins of some of these creatures that some you could view as something of a spoiler for earlier stories. It's not really... But it's less mysterious while still being really, really cool. But yeah, read Color Out of Space or Shadow of Rainsmith or Dunwich Horror or Rats in the Walls. But just be aware that Rats in the Walls is a great story. However, uh, it's got some fucked up racism in it. Like the guy, the name of the cat in the story was the name of his cat in real life. And it is literally N-Word Man. Whoa! Yeah. He's, like I say, horrible, virulent, toxic, racist piece of shit. But... Hell of a storyteller. Hell of a storyteller. Like, he basically invented or popularized, like, cosmic horror in that era. I mean, there's lots of authors before him who were writing weird tales, weird tales before Lovecraft who inspired him and whatnot, but he kind of, like, he, he was basically, like, the next Poe in some ways. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one I have, but I'll definitely take. I it. mean, all of them work from public domain. Okay, so bye. If you're on the Kindle, you can get the complete works of H.P. Lovecraft for free from the store. Like they're all there. You can get off the book with everything you wrote. Can you? Fiction-wise, yeah. <laughs> Fiction-wise. Well, I mean, like the guy wrote like several hundred thousand letters and correspondences that have been published over the years. Oh like, God, no. Yeah, that's but, like the people who read the J.R. Tolkien. Like, here's a letter he wrote his wife, and I'm like, fuck like, that. I don't want to read that. I understand. I also very, very, very much like reading those letters because they're extremely fascinating and give you a lot of insight into stuff. And yeah, it's like how Tolkien was... Exactly. He kind of popularized a lot of stuff and sort of set the standard for stuff. That What's like, um... Like, which is interesting because in Lovecraft's life, he wasn't popular or well-read. It was after he died and August Derleth got all of his stuff like republished through an imprint the critical Arkham House that he kind of became more well-known. Well, that's like, um... What was it where it was, um... Fuck, what am I trying to say? Uh, someone couldn't use the word orc. No, they couldn't use elves or something. Because it was, like, owned by... I think it was, like, maybe D&D. Couldn't use the term elf. But orc was okay. And that's because orc was over, like, a whole bunch of... Well, elves predate Tolkien, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Tolkien invented I forget what it was. I think it was on the episode... I'm pretty sure that Orc wasn't created by Tolkien either. Do you... Uh, did you ever watch the Stephen Colbert play D&D for Red Nose Day? No. I, I can't watch it. Like, I, I understand why it's appealing, but I just... I just oh, it wasn't like a full game. It was just like a short thing. I could maybe... Do the, best, the best part about it was just... Uh, it's Colbert, right? Right. And... At the very beginning, he's like, oh, I haven't played D&D since uh, college. Mm -hmm. Which, like, he's in his 50s oh, he's now. close to 60, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it's him, and he's like, oh, I haven't played D&D since I was in college. A wee lad. And just his face as... You should heal it. Heal up before you kill this guy. Well, they play. Yeah. Is just... Filled with joy. Oh, you can just... Do that every time. I have I have begun to do that. Uh, yeah, I know. Look at I know this house. Colbert is a big Tolkien fanatic. Yeah. Oh, he. Like he even thinks that the Hobbit movies don't suck. <laughs> the, the, the Lord of the Rings movies are spectacular. I like them. They're not oh, great. I find them unwatchable, but the Lord of the Rings movies are brilliant. Mm -hmm. The depths of depravity. Hey, yeah, things are gonna open. Shit! Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Thor's made of metal. <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. Happens all the yeah. time. Hey, you know what happened? It's a rough neighborhood, so I got the reinforced door. Don't worry about it. I paid extra. Forget about it. Oh, this one. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm ready. Don't do a voice. I won't. Oh, don't. Come on. I don't like children in peril. Turn the volume down. I don't want to hear this fucking kid be all bummed and alone and scared. <laughs> Fuck this. Don't wreck my vibe. I used to watch the extended Lord of the Rings films once a year on Christmas. 
find yeah. a girl's mother. Oh yeah, help her. We gotta help her. Oh, uh, but uh, I haven't in the last couple of years because, weirdly enough, it's hard to find twelve uninterrupted hours to watch movies when I have two small children. Oh, God, right? Yeah. Um, oh, when is that? I'm gonna take a little break from playing the game. A, I have to go to the bathroom. But B. But yeah, I really, really like. I hated the Hobbit movies. I also don't understand how they can look so shitty. What am I looking at? Hey, hey, that's cool. This weekend. Wow, what's that? Oh, twenty third, Batman Day. What is that? Why is it called Batman Day? Bruce Wayne's birthday. Oh, really? Yeah. Anyway, a tiny music. Box. Oh, I want to read about that. Extended Fellowship. I like Extended Two Towers. It's my favorite. When Daddy forgets us, we play with it. Play it with him. So we're gonna play that and like summon the mummy, and she's gonna be a monster. <laughs> Did I just, like, predict what's going to happen in this game? Tiny Music Box. A small music box received from a young Yarnum girl. Plays a song shared by her mother and father. Inside the lid is a small scrap of paper. Perhaps an old message. Two names can be made out, however faintly. Viola and Gascoigne. Gascoigne, that's a name I recognize. Why do I recognize the name Gascoigne? Beauty and the Beast. No. Gascon! No, Gascon! That's not why. It's Gaston. I agree with you, Blitz Girl. However, I will correct you in saying... Twin Towers Extended. Two Towers. Sorry, Two Towers <laughs> Extended. Because okay, I like... The Battle of Helm's Deep is like the best The best part. Yeah. But also, when they're going to Helm's Deep... That is true. The added scene with Boromir Fremer and Death and Death and Thor is so That good. is really good. Yeah. Touche. Um, but I always prefer the where they explain Aragorn. Mm. How it's him and he's eating soup and she's like... My father just said he fought with you at this war? How old And he's you? like, yeah, I remember. He was a young lad at that time. And she's like, how fucking old are you? And he's like, I was blessed by this ancient, like, elvish race. Yeah. So he's like 150 at that point. <laughs> but he looks like he's 40. <laughs> There's a specific gas going that I'm looking for that I remember, but I can't think of why or who. Oh, well... My all-time favorite heroic death... Her favorite is an odd choice of word, but my favorite heroic death, like, ever in pop fiction movies would be, like, the... would be, um... Uh, Boromir in The End of Fellowship. Just... Ugh. I would have followed you! Ugh! And when he's all like, Give them a moment for pity's sake! Oh. Oh, yeah. Gets you right there. He's so good. It's a good movie. I should watch those again. I'd like to watch those again. But again, it's hard to find four hours. I guess I could watch like a chunk at a time. Oh, it's hot in this room. Ironically, as much as I love the... I guess irony isn't quite the right term, but as much as I love the Lord of the Rings films, the books, I'm not as... Ho I like The Hobbit as a book. I don't love it's the short. Well, I don't mind long books. My favorite book, my favorite novel of all time is Jerusalem by Alan Moore, and that's like 1,500 pages. But, so it's not the length that bothers me. I, I think when it comes to epic fantasy, quote-unquote, for lack of a better cliche, there's a lot of, like description of sumptuous stew meals and like songs so it's kind of like I don't really need to hear this ancient dwarven song about oh the hobbit about cleaning dishes fuck off that's true and also like the main problem I have with the Lord of the Rings novels is it's really hard to get into them because the first third of Fellowship has nothing whatsoever to do with anything and they're fucking walking around with Tom Bombadil and I'm like fuck Tom Bombadil what is the matter? Why am I reading about this fucking guy walking around singing songs? Shut well, up, what, Tom. What always gets me is just, uh... Kind of what you were just saying, but, like, how much of the book... Like, they... That book is not, like, a two-month journey. It's like well, a five-year I mean, journey. I guess it journey. depends on, like, the distance we're covering, right? Like... They're on foot, so presumably if they have a car. Because, like, also when the Deus Ex Eagle shows up at the end, and they fly back to the shot to the river well, fairly really easily, so I'm thinking, like, as the crow flies, so to speak, the distance maybe isn't that far. So, what's your favorite, like, uh, Lord of the Rings theory? 
Like, there's this theory when he says, like, fly, you fools. It's him trying to be like, no. hey, I think use the fucking No, eagles. he's saying run. There's no, he's saying run away from the Balrog, idiots. He's like, hey, I just distracted him. I don't think that he's suggesting that they fly. Yeah. Because he's the only one who can summon they're the fucking... Because they're sitting there watching like, no! And he's that's... like, get the fuck out. Yeah. What are you Wait, doing? Are you telling me that that's an actual fan theory that he's suggesting that they fly? This is why I hate fan theories, because they're always stupid. That sucks. What kind of moron? Ugh. You still yeah fly? It's like, well, okay, Gandalf, you're the one who whispers to the fucking butterfly. Well, so the, the reason the theory exists is. Oh, thanks. The the reason it exists is because when you come out of Moria, you yeah. are close to the eagle. Sure, but they don't know anything about the eagle. Why wouldn't he just say, "Hey, here's a dragonfly talk"? That's stupid. No, I hate that. And also, we don't know how close the eagle dragon. actually are. Because, Here's a dragon. Because he, fly. remember, he whispers to the dragonfly. That's how he gets him off. Fan theories are almost the only fan theories I like are ones like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where Ferris Bueller isn't actually in the movie and he's actually like, it's, it's like Cameron. A, it's Cameron's like id. I'm yeah. Like, That's fun because it doesn't change anything. But then I've read ones where it's like, oh yeah, Totoro was actually like the spirit of death, and it's like, okay, that's A, stupid, and B, shows a remarkable lack of understanding of animism in like Japanese spiritualism, so just shut your mouth. That's really fucking dumb. That's like, th anybody who would think that is true also probably really likes Fight Club. <laughs> that's my judgmental thing. You don't like Fight Club? No, because I'm not a 14 year old boy. <laughs> and I didn't see Fight Club when I was 14. So if you don't see and read Fight Club when you're a teenager, there's no way to enjoy it because it is dog shit. <laughs> kind of like everything Chuck Pal Unless you read Chuck Palahniuk in high school, there's no way to... I can't imagine an adult finding Chuck Palahniuk and enjoying it for the first time. I, I apologize if I've insulted you and everybody oh, else, yeah. but fuck that fucking movie and book both suck. I got my own answer. Backing him, you sure do. With with Fight Club or with other things? <laughs> with this. Well, yeah, you do. Your this is my Fight Club. Fight, yeah. Well, quit talking about it. Mm. Yeah, there's very few. Oh no, I, I, lo I love you, Rain. This is why I'm actually really glad you're here. <laughs> okay. Because with uh, like if you've seen the uh, like me play with Dave. Yeah. Sounded like you were gasping as you got up. Like you were worried. About it. I know I had a oh my god touch of the um, indigestion. When I play with Dave, it's just a lot of like, what's your favorite cereal? Which are good conversations, absolutely. Yeah. I like cereal. Yeah, my favorite cereal is Reese Puffs. Reese peanut butter bites. Really? Yeah. But yeah, no fan theory is almost not like that. Yeah, it's nothing against Dave. Like Unless it's like, a, if it's a movie that's like, requires a certain amount, like, of open-endedness, like, you can be like, oh, what is this really saying, or what's actually going on here, that's fine. But you if mean it's like, like... David Lynch? Yeah, sure. Like, a movie that's very much open to, in the whole point of it is to interpret it and get something out of it, because it's more about atmosphere and it's not like about linear plot. But, or like I said, the Ferris Bueller one is fun, because it's kind of like, that's just goofy and I like it, but... Well, and it's easy to defend that one. Yeah, but I also find that 99% of fan theories are always like, they were dead the whole time. The whole time he dies in the first five minutes and the rest of the movie is like a, it's like his death dream. And oh. I was like, yeah, you're really creative and interesting. Inception, yeah. You're really creative. Yeah, what, did you think of that all by yourself? That's kind of a big... I love that. As an insult, that's such a good insult. Yeah, you're uh, really, you're really creative. creative. I never would have thought of something so clever. Okay, yeah... Inception is a very good example. That thing at the end of with the, with the top, it's fun to discuss. Like, there isn't a correct answer of, like, is he or is he not in a dream? Because the whole point of it is, in my opinion, the whole point of that ending is that he doesn't care if he is anymore anyway. He's decided it's done. Whether he is or in a dream or not, he doesn't care anymore. Mm -hmm. He's finished. So if he's in a dream, fine, he'll stay there. But if he isn't, then he doesn't care. Okay. That's why he walks away from the top at the end. So, I completely agree. I hope you enjoy this part of the <laughs> He's doing that insult, it's all yours. Oh whoa! It's like a fucking pig man! What? You just got <laughs> You just got killed by a pig! Oh Fuck the cleric! This is the new best thing in this whole game, pig man. Fuck off! Man, pig man! 
He's walking on his hind legs like the end of Animal Farm. Oh my god. Stimpy pig down the hallway. I love it. You should kill that pig before he kills you. Triple stud, just hit him. Hit him! You missed. You whiffed on the pig. You pig whiffed. Oh, yeah, Inception. I like Inception quite a bit. Um, I don't know if I would go so far as to go Terra with them, but I do... Oh, very congratulations. Very You're very creative. Yeah, <laughs> very creative. Um, no, what I was going to say like is... Inception, though. I like your thought on Inception. Yeah. I have also thought about that theory. Mm -hmm. That he's in a dream? Uh, that he's in a dream, or that he's not still in a dream. I don't know. I personally, I don't you do see it wobble a little bit. You do. So I'm like, he's not in a dream. It doesn't wobble at all. However, yeah. it is still open to I, I actually don't know or one way or the other. I've always just sort of decided that like it doesn't matter if he is or he isn't because he doesn't care. Absolutely. And that's what I took out of it. So like, and he spends the whole movie yeah. really caring. Yeah. For so what I he feel doesn't. like to spend a lot of time trying to, d to decide if he still or he is or he isn't kind of misses the point of that. Well, anyway. but well, it also when you think about matter. it, like the kids are in the same outfit they are, and the kids are all right. The kids are. Yeah. Um, that's what true. are your yeah. thoughts on the whole end? I'm going to ask you to be kind Okay. on Christopher Nolan movies altogether. Uh, I think that there are some that are very good. I think there are some that are not. I think that uh, his best film is... Which is I mean, it's probably Memento. What is... Yeah, Memento's probably his best movie. Um, I think his Batman movies are... I think Batman Begins is awful. I think that The Dark Knight is pretty good, and I think Dark Knight Rises is dumb as shit, and I don't like it either. But it's, like, more watchable than Batman Begins, which is awful. Uh, I haven't actually seen Interstellar or Dunkirk yet, because they Dunkirk. came out... Well, because they came out after I had kids, and they're long. So I, I would I'd recommend like Dunkirk, them, but, because yeah. Dunkirk isn't, like sci-fi or anything yeah I would like to see Dunkirk I think I'd probably like it I think I would I, I always appreciate how his films look like yeah I think he's a good director I just you know I think Following is also very good and I really like The Prestige did you just look over there and see Following no no I was checking to see oh, okay. if my pizza was, was like, here did you look over there and see Following and go like oh yeah Following as well Following is very good I yeah I, I you know what though Memento Insomnia is good it's not as it's actually a remake so it's not as good as the original Insomnia yeah yeah did you know Memento is actually a short story? Yeah, it's by his brother, isn't it? Jonathan Nolan. Yeah. yeah. And uh, The Prestige was co-written with the science fiction author Christopher Priest. Yep. Who also had a really good run on um, Black Panther in the late 90s, I think. Didn't it was know like that. the first really good Black Panther out, 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 since I, like the 70s. I love Nolan. Cool. He, he's, yeah. my, he's my favorite director. Oh, really? That's yeah. cool. Yeah, I like Nolan. I, I don't... I, I'm certainly not like a Nolan, I guess, fanboy, and I do not care for his Batman movies. I love his Batman movies. I think The Dark Knight is um, has stuff in it that is brilliant. I think his depiction of you Joker know what is really I would good. say I that like it. all the parts of The Dark Knight that have nothing to do with Batman are really good. Mm -hmm. um, like when it's like a cool crime heist movie and like a this. All the stuff with Harvey Dent is pretty good. Um, I also think Christian Bale is a good Bruce Wayne and an awful Batman. But I, I love this conversation. I just, I never, but I really don't like you know, the dark Batman Begins. That movie is. Look, everybody knows Batman's origin. Why do we have to spend ninety minutes on his origin before we get into Batman Begins? Like, I did not just need to spend ninety minutes watching Bruce Wayne become Batman. I, I, I. It's that's that's stupid. I love Batman. And I as love per I like Batman too. As everyone will know because of my tattoos and everything. I love Batman to death. I no, Jeffrey Dahmer loved people to death. You just love Batman a lot. I could live my life as a Batman fan, not having to witness Thomas and Martha's death. Yeah, but like, what if we, what if we got get to it. see like a shot of like a hand and then like some pearls hitting the ground? Fuck. How about that? <laughs> what if, so what's the best what if we did something no one's ever done? <laughs> what's that? Aren't you creative? Um, Aren't you creative? And what's the best Batman well. movie then? Is it The Dark Knight? Oh, I don't like this topic of conversation. You're allowed because to like lots of them, but what's your what if you could only watch one? 
you only had to watch one Batman movie, what would it be? I would have to say Dark Knight. That's fine. Dark Knight Rises is a very close sometimes. Really? I, it's so silly, though. But I love Bane. Yeah, I am Gotham's Reckoning. But I, oh, hello, Batman. I love him like a break first. Like, I he love like his own old time radio. But I love Bane, and when you compare that to the last Bane's. depiction of Bane on the screen, you're like, I yeah. like that better. Because to me, the Bane, Uma Thurman Bane. That fuck you. Okay, here's the thing. Batman and Robin is a movie that I feel is unfairly maligned because it is a hundred percent aware of how campy and stupid it is, and it's not trying to be anything else. Mm-mm. And it is. Oh no, that movie is completely self-aware. I like a- that movie. Absolutely. Sure. I think Batman Forever sucks. Any but comic I book like movie Batman and Robin. needs to stay away from trying to be too serious. I will a hundred percent agree. You like the Nolan movies, <laughs> however. When you make Bane, Bane should be a big. Burn. Bane should either be the Hulk. Burn. No, he Bane should never should be, the, be Hulk, the Hulk, or he should be a luchador. He should never be either. I don't like Bane. He was an intelligent mercenary. He it's, was one of the first villains I, in Batman history to figure out Bruce Wayne was Batman. I don't like Bane. He hid in the Batcave. He <laughs> caused a massive Arkham breakout, so yes. that Batman would be tired. <laughs> Oh, I love that Batman. No, no, no. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about Nightfall. Batman Nightfall. I, I don't like Nightfall either. He, he, fuck. I don't Batman like a lot of Nightfall. Oh. Batman. I think the only '90s Batman I like would be like Bruce Wayne, Fugitive, and all the shit that Brubaker started that he didn't get to finish. Um, the best Batman movie. If I could only watch one forever, it would be. Okay. Batman my favorite, returns. no, it would actually be Mask of the Phantasm. That's my favorite Batman movie. Uh, but if I could only watch one forever, it would be um, Scooby Doo meets Batman: Brave and the Bold. Because I've watched it with my kids. You a know I hate times. you so much right now. I really like that. That's movie. a Scooby Doo movie. That's not even yeah. a Batman movie. Uh, but it's Scooby Doo fighting Batman villains. It's, actually, throw it's also it's like the Brave and the Bold movie though. And Batman: Brave and the Bold is my second favorite version of Batman, behind the animated series. What am I doing? I don't know, dying. You have me upset because you said Scooby Doo. It's really good though. It's have you ever seen it? It's good. I haven't. It's good. Um And Diedrich Bader is a great Batman. He's the he's my second favorite get... Batman behind uh, Kevin Nolan. But yeah, Master of the Phantasm is my favorite. Uh, I also like Batman One a lot. I like Batman Returns. I think Batman Forever is an abomination. It is the worst Batman movie. You know what? I agree. I hate that movie. I hate it more than I but hate Batman Jim Begins. But Jim Carrey's Riddler. Surprisingly okay with it's it. It's okay. I also don't hate... That's actually that's actually the nice tattoo. It's right here. And it's the Riddler. 1989 with oh, really? the Riddler. Are you going to do the Bat Dance? Are you going to listen to the Prince soundtrack while you're getting it? <gasps> I it's wish. It's so good. That Prince soundtrack. It's so good. Is Bat so Dance good. is a great song. Okay, um, I'm going to time this perfectly. Yeah, I've se- there are some Batman movies I haven't seen now because I... Basically, all of the DCU stuff, so like, now the one where Batman fights Superman. Sir, up there, do your thing! Pay me to watch that movie. After I saw Man of Steel, I was like, you know what? I can't remember hating a movie this much in a long time. It would be foolish of me to continue to watch these movies. Because they are clearly not for me, heal. Oh, shit. Like, oh god, did I hate Man of Steel. And I also like, to be honest, as much as I like Batman, I, I, I kind of like Superman better. I liked Man of Steel. <sighs> Hang on, let me finish. I knew you were going to interrupt me too. I wasn't ending my sentence there. I know. But I liked Man of Steel so for the idea of what society would actually do if someone like Superman came. And it is a matter of, like, if the Christopher Reeve Superman... They were fucking okay with it. They were like, oh, cool, this guy? Yeah, we're down. And I'm like, that's not how society works. Society would absolutely be like, uh, hey, guy who can do whatever the fuck he wants. No. We live in a society. I'm going to grab my pizza. You collect your thoughts. Is it here? Collect your thoughts. I will come back and tell you all the reasons why you are incorrect. (laughs) Because you kind of (laughs) do. I don't know how she came out. I don't know how it happened. You were there. I assume. So, okay, I, he- I hear your point about this is what it would really be like. However, I don't care for superhero movies being like, this is what it would really be like, because mm. basically, 
the idea of like what about let's do realistic superheroes it's like yeah you're not going to do it better than Watchmen though so why are you doing this mm. you're not bringing anything new to this but you don't like the movie Watchmen no, it's a, I think the movie Watchmen is a mediocre superhero movie and an absolutely piss poor adaptation of one of the best novels of all time where the hell am I I'm here okay. like Zack Snyder read that book missed, didn't understand any of it <laughs> got all the wrong points thought Rorschach was the hero and then turned it into a superhero movie mm. how hopeful are you for the HBO show I will not be watching it I, I won't buy DC Comics anymore because of the way they've handled things like Watchmen and Alan Moore in the past. So, ah. like I, 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 w- I, I, there are certain comic book writers whom I will never, I won't buy their work anymore because they worked on that before Watchmen book. Oh, okay. So, All right. I'm a little bit extreme. But yeah, I will never see a frame of that show. I do want to see Doom Patrol, though. I haven't watched that yet, but I... Doom Patrol was I I actually it. surprisingly well. Well done. I actually really liked it. Because it seems to kind of harken back to some of the stuff that I cared about from... Oh, cutscene! Use both hands. Wow. Well, he has our hands. He comes closer and he's just, like, holding his gun. Oh, no, never mind. He's got to get head off. He looks kind of like a non wheelchair version of the guy from the beginning. Mm hmm. Garmin, yeah. So is this guy a hunter? He is. Beasts all over the shop. You'll be one of the soon. Who said that? He did? Yeah. He's got bandages over his eyes. He does. Father Gascoigne. Oh, so he's a boss. He is. Okay. And then you do the gun shooty tummy stab move on the Yes. Ball? Him you can destroy. Welcome back. I agree with you, Superman. The movie is great. Prior to the Spider-Verse, it was my favorite superhero movie. I also like... Um, Teen Titans go to the movies, oh, and I like the Hellboy smell? movies. Oh, shit, I forgot to do something. The sweet blood. Well, this is gonna suck. Oh, it seems to me it's enough to make a man sick. <laughs> shit, I'm stuck. Happy oh. pin. Allergies! Jesus. He's fast. He yeah. actually does seem to be easier than the last boss, though. So I guess he's the first, like, actual boss, not optional boss. Oh, here we go. Now he's gone trick weapon on us. Same weapon we have. Well, it's a two stage boss battle. Second phase, here we go. Okay. Like when you fight Mr. Burns at the end of the Simpsons arcade game. Shit. Father Gaspoin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
they mentioned somebody about a gas void, didn't they? they he did. was the right. He was one of the the guys from the Church of Healing, whatever it was called. Right. Let me read it again. Oh, your dad is Father Gascoigne. Oh, sweet. Do you remember what she said about him? That he or, ran away and never came back. But do you remember what she said about the music box? So they used to play it, and then she would... I was you would remember who he was. Oh, so we'll turn back into the dude so you can kill him without fighting the monster man. Oh, that's cool. I was able to do what they could never do and prepare to try. Remember that? He one shot. He he was able to one shot the guy. Oh, really? So he was like, he was like, oh, he won't beat him on his first try. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't worried about like doing the music box. Okay. But then he one he did him on his first try. So he's like, oh, uh, okay, cool. Well, music box exists. Oh. So you don't have to use the music box to kill him. It's just easier if you do. Uh, it does something, yeah. I'll show you. Now that I've equipped it as a... A thing? An item. Well, yeah, you can't pause this game to equip shit, can you? No. It's like real life. Well... Well, obviously this is the only thing about this game that's realistic. Well, I mean, let's check it <laughs> you don't ever. Uh, I'm actually gonna send the elevator back. I would not use like a big swingy axe if I had my suspenders flapping around. You're just asking to hook that shit on something. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping. You charge up that swing, bro. I was going to. I hit the wrong button. Into the future. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Oh, the island. Then I'll throw you the wood. Just waiting for my son. I think it's one of those movies I have to force you to watch. My son would like to watch it, but I've said no. The <laughs> end? The end can be quite scary. A lot of that movie is pretty scary, but the ending in particular. It's also just too intense. It's true. And he gets too violent. Well, he shoots a guy in the face. That's so great, though. Good boy. <laughs> I think he'll also be sad when the monkey dies. Bad yeah. dates. Bad dates. Whoa, shield guy. Oh, oh shit. shit. Oh, Ow! <laughs> It's weird that, like, you killed that big guy and then the little pitchfork man kind of kicked your ass there for a minute. Thanks, Dave. Take him with you. Your name's My name Joey. is Joey. <laughs> Dave's not here, man. Dave's not here, man. That guy, Tommy Chong, consistently has that line in every movie he does. It's a throwback to the oh, sketch, I, right? Yeah, absolutely. But it's even in, um... What's that kid's movie? The Spanish one. Come down. No one <laughs> fights like Gascon. He is a dick like Gascon. No one walks around turning into a fucking monster guy like Gascon. Gascon! Gascon! I don't know what movie you're talking about. Like Dora the Explorer? Or yeah. No, um, the animation has them all look like old, like, dolls. Is it? What is it? It's gonna drive me insane. Old dolls. The Book of Life. Yeah. I like that movie. They sing, um, Pop songs. They do. Step number eight. <laughs> um, but yeah, he has a character where it's like 
Someone says something to the main bad guy, and the bad guy's like this giant guy. And he goes, mm-hmm. why don't you pick on someone your own size? And then Tommy Chong's character's like, there's no one that big, man. And you're just like, ah, it's a throwback to that. He's not here, man. Dave's not here, man. Dave? Yeah. Some guy was just here looking for you, man. Away! Away! What movie are you talking about? The, well, it was one of their original sketches. And it's probably, I don't know if it's an Up in Smoke or in Cheechin Chong's... It's in one of the first couple Cheech mm-hmm. I think it's an Up in Smoke. Do you remember the show Cheech Marin was in? Um, that I always get confused with something else. And it's... I think it's Nash Bridges? Yeah, he was in Nash Bridges, yeah. He was the sidekick. He was the sidekick, yeah. I used to watch Nash Bridges with my grandma. I used to watch it with my parents. It's good. I like that show. It was okay. I like that kind of, that era of TV and that kind of mystery show. It reminded me uh, when I finally had a chance to watch, like, Magnum P.I. I I was like, oh, Nash Bridges is like... That era of show... Here's, like, a new version of... My favorite TV show, one of my favorite TV shows of all time is The Rockford Files. Oh, okay, yeah. Never seen it, but I know oh, it, obviously. Yeah. My dad was obsessed with Jag for a while. <laughs> cool. Hello. Look at my lips. <laughs> I forgot that he was go go. I know, we should do more references. It's a shame he's got that hood on. That was well done. Yeah, that was cool. Go me. <laughs> yeah, boy. Shield guy, you can't shield a boulder. I think you'll find that I can. Why are you shooting me? Guess gone. The Why fuck? Do you keep running into his bullets. Run around. Well, he should. He shouldn't do that when I'm so close to him. This is gonna be a fucking mess. This is the run. This is the run, this is my bloodborne run. Fuck off, Gascon! Gascoin. No one is a. Eviscerate this all, bitch! Dick like Gascon! Gives a lick like it's <laughs> When I was a boy, I ate two dozen eggs every day to get large. Now I just put this weird blood in my face. Cause I'm roughly the size of a barge! I'm <laughs> oh, it's so loud! Turn it down! I hate this song! Whoa! It's gone, man! Hey! Oh, that's disappointing! I'm so alive! Fuck! Let me pin! I'm trying! Oh! Ah! <laughs> <My> fucking graveyard! That's <laughs> nine? Yeah. It was, you were doing better that time. <laughs> but that's what the music box does. It yeah. makes him go like, What the fuck? Oh, shit! Memories! I'm Venom, and there's a bell. They're all alone in the moonlight. Memories are to learn in the moonlight. <clears throat> What's upsetting is I've played this. Like, I've gotten past Gascon. So that's the upsetting part. I've played you beat this game before. Oh, I've never beaten this game. Oh. What does it want? Never beaten this game. Hey-o. What did you say? I was being a jerk, so I can see why. That is a very jerky thing. You got this, though, bro. You were close the last time, you just kept running into gravestones. Yeah. I wonder when it gets like that if it's better to not lock onto him so you can man- maneuver around the gravestones faster. Maybe. Bye, guys! This is Boss Run. Running after bosses. Why are you sending the elevator back there? That way I don't have to worry about it. 
I need to do a quick pause run. Why would you have to worry about it if it was still down? Uh. I know that. Like, what is, what is the concern? Uh, if I want to do a good boss run. Right, but what is the only thing to do about? I would have to wait for it. And so those two guys could potentially come up behind me. And then I would need to heal. I have bigger fish to fry. I'm a cowboy. <laughs> that was one of the vocal lines in Clay Fighter 63 and the third, which is an intensely bad game for the Nintendo 64. It was one of the worst keys that first from Jim says. I think it's like command throw, where you'd like wrap your head around him like the lasso and you go, ah, I'm a cowboy! But then again, so did the Super Nintendo play player games. When I was a kid, I thought they were good. When I played them, I was like, oh, these are, these are bad even for that era of playing game. This is, this is dog shit. Ow! Oh yeah! All that blood. Sam Raimi will be up in your bitch. Ow! Use the tree. Nice, good timing. Yar. Okay. Yarnum. Yarnum. Ah, oh, that's why they call him that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Good. Here we time go. go. This, is, this is like you, you're you're turning this guy into bald bull over here. area when you're fighting with nope. you don't want to? Yeah, I was going to say that would be weird. Oh, oh there you go. Oh! Good. Oh, you got this. This is the run. Don't get cocky. Yeah! Don't get cocky. Pray slaughtered. Woo -woo 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 -woo. Odeon Tomb Key. Read it. I want to read the Tomb Key. Okay. Favorite text. Hang on. Okay, good. Sometimes they'll wait outside, and then the bad guys, after you read the bot and that wall comes oh, down, really? they'll come into the box arena. Uh, here we go. Key to the gate that blocks the tomb of Odeon. Beyond the tomb, Odeon Chapel can be found in the center of the cathedral wall. Only today the church is abandoned, and some say that the residents of Odeon have all gone mad. Sweet. So level three is the temple of Odeon? Huh. I can dig it. And you got your blood echoes back. Well, 850. Well, that's nothing to sneeze at. Nope. Okay. So before I go back to the hunter's dream. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go get back and find the girl's mom. Where you at, mama? I find you, mama. You up these stairs? Are you in one of these caskets? I hope not. I take it you know where she is. I do. Okay. She's on the roof. Oh, she's dead. That's too bad. That little girl's gonna be so bummed. Let's read that brooch. What would it be under? It must be under here. Yep, there it is. A woman's bright red brooch engraved with the name Viola. Perhaps the jewel is a gift from a hunter. Used to change into drop your blood gem that fortifies any weapon. Oh, cool. So you can use that to fortify a weapon? Yes. Or you can gonna... give it to the girl. Give it to the girl. We'll be an asshole. You promised her. This is a Paragon run. Paragon run. Oh. Did I get that reference right? I don't actually like those games. Thank you all so much for watching. To join my guests and I live, check out our Twitch channel, Nearly Competent. You can reach us at the social media links in these credits. And if you want to support us even more, check out our Patreon. 
Thank you to the fiends currently supporting us. We will see you all next time. Have a good evening.